this diagram is showing you the forces that are acting on this plank, which is at rest. So we've got the weight of the plank, which is acting at its centre of gravity. We've got the normal reaction force from the pivot on the plank, which I've labelled N1. And then the final force we've labelled is the weight of the load. Now, the weight of the load is the force that is acting on the load due to the Earth's gravitational field. But it's not a force that is acting on the plank. So why have we included this in our labelling? If we consider the forces acting on the load, then we've got its weight, but we also have the plank exerting a normal reaction force on the load. And because the load is at rest, we can say this normal reaction force is equal to the weight of the load. Newton's third law of motion states that if an object A exerts a force on object B, then object B will exert an equal and opposite force on object A. So objects A and B here are the plank and the load. So if the plank is exerting a normal reaction force on the load, then the load will exert an equal and opposite normal reaction force on the plank. So here we have the two normal reaction forces. So if we now consider the force that is acting on the plank, then it's the normal reaction force from the load on the plank. So if we go back to our original labelling of the forces acting on the plank, rather than the weight of the load, we are strictly dealing with the normal reaction force from the load on the plank, which is equal to the weight of the load.